Now we will look at the inverse trigonometric functions. The first one is uh, the inverse cosine function, and the others are inverse sine function and the inverse tangent function. And in a similar way, we can find the others as well, like inverse cosecant function, inverse cotangent, or inverse secant. But now we want to focus only three of them. Now here our goal is this, I mean, when defining the inverse function, like we want to go, okay, generally the cosine function here or a trigonometric function always starts with the angle here. Uh, we give an angle and uh, by the cosine, uh, we find the value of cosine. So we say like 90 degrees here and we say cosine 90 degrees and it gives you the value one, uh, zero. So you put the value here zero. So it means 90 goes to zero, right? So uh, here we want to do the reverse of this. So the important thing is this one here. So we want to get, okay, we want to, when zero is given, so we want to get which angle corresponds to it. Like we want to get to 90 degrees here or uh, in terms of radian, it will be pi over two. So this function will be cosine inverse function. Uh, and Okay, so we will define a cosine inverse function. And one uh, important thing here is uh, if you try to go to this angle here from zero by using the inverse function, uh, we have some problems here. The problem is uh, like cosine pi over two is zero, but cosine three pi over two is also zero. Or cosine minus pi over three is equal to pi over two is equal to zero. And when we choose this one, I mean, which angle will we choose, like pi over 2 or 3 pi over 2 or which one? So when doing this, we restrict ourselves to a, uh, a set of angles here. So we restrict ourselves to the angles between 0 and pi. So when we, I mean, when you define cosine, you don't put any uh, restriction on the angle. But when you try to go back from uh, cosine by using cosine inverse, you have a limited place here. So we say it's you have to have the angles between zero and pi. Okay, and in this way, it will be a one-to-one -one function, and this inverse function will be well defined. It will be a function. So uh, we use okay the cosine inverse of x equal to y means cosine of y is equal to x. And here x can be any number between minus 1 and 1. So, you know, we are dealing with this part now. Values, and we want to go from cosine inverse. So these are the values. And these values should be between minus 1 to 1 because the cosine takes the angles to minus 1, 1 to 1. And the, well, the angles should be from pi, 0 to pi. Now, let's see this example, for example, cosine inverse of uh, 0 is pi over 2, because cosine pi over 2 is 0. And here, be careful, this pi over 2 is inside here. So, the condition on cosine inverse is the angle it brings is always between 0 and pi. This is the most important part about the cosine. So, because we restrict the, domain, the function cosine onto the interval 0 pi, and it makes the cosine function one to one. Now it brings the other properties as well. I mean, uh, now if you try to make the graph of, okay, we will look at the graph of cosine inverse, but first I want to give you the properties of the cosine inverse. Now, the domain of cosine inverse can be any number. I mean, uh, it's the numbers uh, between minus one and one. And the range will be just the angles between 0 and pi. So this is important here. This is also an important thing. And cosine inverse of x is between 0 to pi over 2, when x is bigger than 0. And cosine inverse is from pi over 2 to pi over 2, when x is less than 0. And we know the cosine inverse is the reflection of the graph of cosine x equals to y axis. This is coming from uh, the facts from the inverse function and the function, uh, function graph. Now, uh, cosine inverse of x is decreasing on minus 1 to 1, yeah. 
And here, the, this is important. We have cosine, cosine inverse of theta, uh, and cosine inverse and cosine theta. So they are generally not the same, okay? So be careful about this, and they're not the same. So sometimes we can directly say, hey, uh, uh, we can cancel them. And to cancel them, then there are some conditions. And what are these conditions? Theta should be minus 1. I mean, if theta is a number, a value between minus 1 and 1, and if you have cosine, cosine inverse of theta, you can directly cancel them out. It will be theta. And uh, now if we have something like this, the cosine inverse and cosine theta, now a, theta is an angle here, as you see, because we are taking the cosine of it. So then we can delete them if theta is between 0 and pi. If not, if not, the fifth condition says if not, then it's not equal to theta. You cannot cancel them. In this case, you have to find, okay, if you want to find this, you have to find the reference of angle theta, uh, which is alpha, let's say. Now, this gives us the formula. Cosine inverse cosine theta is equal to alpha, the reference angle of theta, if cosine theta is positive. If cosine theta is less than zero, it will be pi minus alpha. Okay, this is also one important thing to know. Let's look at the inverse cosine function. Here is uh, the table for it. So y is equal to cosine inverse of x here. And uh, the x values are taking the values from between minus 1 and 1. And for each value, we try to find the corresponding angle between 0 and pi. So this becomes the range. You know, the range here is uh, 0 to pi. Uh, range of cosine inverse and the domain here is from minus 1 to 1 so uh, let's check cosine pi over 2 is you know it's 0 cosine pi over 3 is minus 1 over, 1 over 2 it's 60 degrees so when you take the inverse you know uh, the cosine inverse of 1 over 2 it will go back to pi over 3 Cosine inverse of 0 will go back to 90 degrees or pi or 2. And now we are trying to find the values between 0 and 180. So, okay. Sorry, this is 0. Now, if you put these values here, and the domain here is minus 1 to 1. This is the domain. And uh, here is the range. The range is uh, going up to pi. So it's between 0 and pi is... It's the range here. Yes. And now, okay. We see everything here. Like when you pick any uh, x value here, it corresponds to an angle between 0 and pi. This is the most important thing here. So if you Okay, uh, if you memorize it and if you keep the graph in your mind, it will be good. I mean, at least uh, you have to know it's between uh, the x-axis will, will be between minus 1 and 1. And uh, the, the y values will be between 0 and pi. This is the most important thing here. Now, let's try to... Uh, evaluate the following without the calculator here. Now, cosine, cosine inverse of minus 1 here. Uh, you know, this is from this property here. Cosine and cosine inverse of minus 1 is equal to minus 1 because minus 1 is in minus 1, uh, minus 1 is in the domain of cosine inverse. So, cos, cosine inverse, you can cancel them as long as this is um, in the domain of cosine inverse. And when it comes to here, cosine inverse equal cosine inverse of 2, it's, it's undefined because uh, 2 is not between minus 1 and 1. So it, this one is basically cosine inverse equal to 2 is the angle, angle uh, which makes cos equal to 2. And this is not possible. 
So this is not possible. So such thing doesn't exist or we say it's undefined. Now, when it comes to the other one, uh, cosine inverse of minus 1 over 2, uh, you can find, okay, um, here is how you can find it. Uh, you can start with theta, let theta be equal to cosine inverse of minus 1 over 2. So what we what does this mean is, uh, what this means is cosine theta is equal to cosine of cosine inverse minus 1 over 2, which is, minus 1 over 2 and now we look I mean we try to find a value I mean a, a theta such that cosine theta is equal to minus 1 over 2 and theta is uh, 0 to pi so uh, which value of theta between this interval uh, in this interval which angle will make cosine theta equal to minus 1 over 2 so here uh, it will be uh, pi over th three and you will you can say it's two pi over three now why it's pi over three now the uh, the thing is uh, we are trying to make an angle from I mean uh, find an angle between zero and pi zero and pi means like zero 180 so you are trying to find an angle uh, I mean it can this I mean uh, between zero and 180 so it might be a theta angle here or a theta angle here so for sure this is negative so it has to be here so a negative it has to be here so for sure it's not an acute angle so one other thing is what is the reference angle for it so cosine theta is equal to 1 over 2 and so if the reference angle is alpha here so cosine alpha will be equal to 1 over 2 as you know so this alpha should be equal to 60 degrees so if it is 60 degrees here, and theta should be 120 degrees, and this will be equal to 2 pi over 3. So you can say you find the theta, which is does cosine because inverse of minus 1 over 2 is 2 pi over 3. So you go from the reference angle and put the reference angle in the correct place and find theta. Now let's look at this problem here, cosine inverse of cosine 8 pi over 7. Now um, the, the first thing comes to mind is like can we uh, cancel them? No, we cannot cancel them because this 8 pi over 7 is not between 0 and pi. So here there's a, I want to also I want to show you this one and this one. You know, they are very different. They are very different. They are different. So big, you know, the order is changing the, the functions. So cosine inverse and cosine or cosine cos of cosine inverse, they are definitely different things. Here you want this angle to be here, but here you want this to be minus one to one. Okay, so this is important. Cosine inverse cos. Here cosine inverse cos. So uh, this is important. So this is definitely not in zero pi. So if it is not zero pi, so this is how, how we can do it. Theta, let theta is this. Then take the cosine of both sides. Now cosine, cosine inverse, cancel out. We have some number here, and this number is between minus one and one, no problem. And uh, we have this cosine theta. We want to find a theta such that cosine is equal to eight pi over seven. But theta is also has to be between 0 and pi. Now, uh, we can use the reference angle here. So first write the 8 pi over 7 in reference angle. When you try to write this in re reference angle, you will get pi over 7. And you will see cosine 8 pi over 7 is equal to minus cosine pi over 7. And cosine, since cosine is negative here, cosine 8 pi over 7 is negative and the reference angle is pi over 7 then you can say it will it will be pi minus pi over 7 here yeah, which is equal to 6 pi over 7 so um, 
what you can do here is uh, you can try to find the reference angle. So once you find the reference angle, this is pi over 7. You can do it from here. You got, And then since it's negative, you can say theta is in here. Since this is pi over 7, so you can say theta is pi minus pi over 7. So this is a little tricky here, but um, again, I will tell you, uh, first, if you have a uh, theta which is not inside here, I mean this 8 pi over 7 not here, you see? Now you want to find the theta here, like that, and you want to find cosine theta is equal to cosine 8 pi over 7, something like this. Now. What you do here is go to reference angle here, graph, which is pi over 7, and check this cosine 8 pi. This is a negative, right? And if it is negative, it will be uh, between 0 and 180. We are looking, the, we are uh, trying to find the angle between 0 and 180. It means in quadrant 1 or quadrant 2. So here it will be minus in quadrant 2. So you put the reference angle pi over 7, and then you got the angle theta, pi minus pi over 7. So you can also use the formula given uh, in the previous page about you know how to find the reference angle and uh, how to find theta by using the reference angle. So you, you will see a piecewise defined function there. Now let's talk about the sine inverse function. So the inverse function is denoted, sine inverse is denoted by this or arc sine x. And we will uh, we are uh, restricting the sine function on the interval minus pi over 2 pi over 2. And sine is now 1 to 1 on this interval. So we can talk about the inverse. So basically, uh, what we do here is sine inverse is working this way. Uh, it's taking the values from minus 1 to 1. OK, all the values. I mean, and you're bringing uh, only the angles from minus pi over 2 to pi over 2. But we know the sine x is, uh, it can be anything here. And only it goes to, uh, you know, minus 1 to 1. So this is sine x function. But sine uh, inverse function, it doesn't go all real numbers, so it it goes only uh, to the values from minus pi over two to pi over two. So here is how we do it. Okay, sine inverse of x is equal to y means. Uh, which, okay, the sine y equal to x. So sine in, uh, inverse always brings an angle here. For x is uh, between minus 1 and 1, and y will be between minus pi over 2 and pi over 2. And uh, here are some properties of it. Uh, the domain of sine inverse is always from minus 1 to 1. So because this is because of sine x, and the range of sine uh, sine x sine inverse of x is minus pi over two pi over two, and uh, sine inverse of x is a negative angle if x is negative, and if x is positive, it's a positive angle between zero and hundred uh, zero and pi over two radians. So it means uh, ninety degrees. Now, uh, the graph of sine inverse is the reflection of the graph of sine x across to y equal to x. Uh, this is one of the facts from following from the uh, inverse functions. And sine negative sine inverse of x is increasing on minus 1 to 1. So we will see that in the graph. And uh, can we do the cancellation here, like sine sine inverse if we have sine sine inverse of theta? Yes, if theta is inside minus 1, 1. You can do this if this happens. Now, if we reverse, I mean, if we change the order of the functions, we have to be careful. Now, theta is any angle. I mean, so sorry. 
uh, in order to cancel them, you have to have theta is between minus pi over 2 and pi over 2. Otherwise, it will not be correct. So in this case, if theta, if the theta here is not minus pi over 2, it's not inside the pi, minus pi over 2 and pi over 2 interval, in this case, we will check, I mean, we will use the reference angle of theta. So the reference angle of theta is alpha, let's say, and if sine is positive, then alpha. This will be equal to alpha. But if sine theta is negative, then this will be negative alpha. So as you know, this alpha and negative alpha, in any case, they will be between minus pi over 2 and pi over 2. So this method or this formula here will always bring us some, uh, uh, some angle inside minus pi over 2 and pi over 2. Now, uh, let's look at the graph of this, sine inverse. Yeah, this is sine inverse of x. Um, when you put here sine inverse of minus 1, uh, which angle between minus pi over 2 and pi over 2 angle makes uh, sine equal to minus 1? Of course, not the positive ones. The only uh, option here is minus pi over 2. We know sine minus pi over 2 is, uh, you know, is equal to uh, minus sine pi over 2, and which is equal to minus 1, you know. Now, here is the verification of it, and you can do the others as well. And now you can get the graph of y equal to sine inverse of x this way, like x is between minus 1 and 1, here is the domain. Okay, and here is the range. So range will be minus pi over 2 to pi over 2. So this will be um, the graph of inverse sine function. So the only thing you have to know is the domain of such the x input for a sine inverse it will be any value between minus 1 and 1. And the angle corresponding to that or sine inverse, uh, the value of sine inverse will be an angle between minus pi over 2 and pi over 2. Now, uh, let's do it. Let's do these. Uh, sine, sine inverse of negative 3, negative 0 0.3. Now, um, this is between minus 1 and 1. So, it, it is possible to find its angle. Okay, the sine inverse, will it give, will it give you uh, its, its angle? Then when you uh, evaluate sine at the angle, of course, it will give you the same value, minus 3. I mean, or we can say if this inside, if the value inside is between minus 1 and 1, and if we have the order sine, sine inverse, then we can cancel them out. But... When it comes to, okay, this wasn't, I was not expecting that. Okay, now when it comes to here, uh, the answer here is uh, undefined. Why? Because this angle here, if it is theta angle, okay, if this is theta angle, it means sine theta is equal to minus 4. And uh, this is not possible for any theta, so such theta doesn't exist. So such theta theta doesn't exist mean uh, sine inverse of negative 4 cannot be calculated. So when it comes to this question here, the C, like you can say that, uh, let this be theta, because this is, you know, searching for the angle. So if it's a sine inverse, it has to be an angle. So sine theta is equal to minus 1, and theta is between minus pi over 2 and pi over 2. And you know, uh, since it's negative, it will not be on the positive side. So it will be just what makes 1. It makes, yeah, sine 90 makes 1, but 
uh, we have minus 1, so it has to be minus pi over 2. So you say theta should be minus pi over 2. So you write here sine inverse is equal to minus pi over 2. Now, when it comes to the last one, can we do the sum cancellation rule here? Uh, indeed, no, uh, because this guy here is not inside minus pi over 2 and pi over 2. It's not. So if it is not, we cannot cancel them. So what will we do? Uh, what we do here is try to go with this angle here. What is this angle? It is sine 270 degrees, right? So, so what is 270 degrees? It's here, so it will be 0 minus 1. So I understand this part will be sine 270, and here this is called sine 270, so I understand this is minus 1. So instead of, you know, sine 3 pi over 2, you can say here it's minus 1. So the question comes to C now, and the answer in C is minus pi over 2. So sine inverse sine pi, 3 pi over 2 will be equal to minus pi over 2. As you see, uh, this is not in uh, I mean between minus pi over 2 and pi over 2. So for this reason, we didn't do the cancellation here, no. So as you see, uh, these numbers are not the same. So you have to be careful. And one thing I want you to pay attention is this this order and this order. So not not same. Look at the tertip here, sine, sine, inverse, and sine, inverse, sine. So they are not indeed the same things. So they're not the same. So we have to be careful about the x or the input in uh, the, the value uh, which is given inside the function. Now we have the tangent function and uh, you know the tangent function is not one to one so it's uh, graph is something like this. So it goes like this, you know, it's here minus pi over 2, and here pi over 2. Uh, in this interval, it's uh, it's 1 to 1. So if we restrict and we don't talk about the other parts, uh, we can talk about the inverse of this function. Now, uh, so in this interval, it will be 1 to 1. And then we can talk about the tangent inverse, which means like when you, whenever you pick a point here, you can find a, an angle, only one angle corresponding to it. So we define the tangent inverse this way then. Tangent inverse of x equal to y means tangent y is equal to x. And here x can be anything, but y, the angle now, the angle here, and this is the value here, and this is the angle now. Angle will be always between minus pi over 2 and pi over 2. This is how we define it. Can it be another interval? No, we define it this way. So this is the definition of the function. We force it to be like that. We define it to be like that. Okay, now let's look at the properties of it. So the domain of tangent inverse of x will be minus infinity to infinity. So this value can be here, uh, any value. And the range here will be an angle. So this value here, the y, is always between uh, minus, an angle between minus pi over 2 and pi over 2. And uh, if, okay, if x is negative, if you put a negative value, for sure the angle corresponding to it will be negative and if uh, you put a positive value positive value and then it will be this is positive value and then uh, the angle corresponding to it will be an acute angle or between zero and two pi, zero and pi over two 
And the other things, uh, as we know, the, inverse, the graphs of inverse and the function and its inverse and their reflection of each other. So the graphs of y equal to tangent inverse is the reflection of the graph of y equal to tangent x across to y equal to x. And the tangent inverse is increasing on minus infinity to infinity. You will see that in the graph. And the graph of y is equal to tangent inverse has two horizontal asymptotes. Uh, here is how we do it. Like this is tangent. Okay, I want to show you this one. Tangent x is this, you know. And now when you reflect it through the y-axis, you will get such thing. So this here, when you reflect y equal to minus pi over 2 and uh, the vertical asymptotes here, y equal to pi over 2. This is, sorry, this is minus, this is plus. So they will go to here as the asymptotes like that. y equal to pi over 2. These are x, sorry, this is x, x, and here it will be y equal to minus pi over 2. Uh, these are the horizontal asymptotes now. I mean, you will see them now. I mean, in the, in the graph, and uh, the tangent, tangent inverse theta is equal to theta for any theta. Uh, so for any theta means like any real number. Okay, so you can directly say when we can cancel them. But here, if we change the order, the order tangent inverse tangent theta. Uh, this is true, like you can do this if theta is minus pi over 2 uh, inside minus pi over 2 and pi over 2 interval. And in general, this is they're not the same. I mean, they, they, we cannot do the cancellation in this case. And in this case, if theta is not in this interval, this is not equal to theta. And in this case, we can find the tangent inverse tangent theta with the help of its reference angle. So you find the reference angle of theta, which is alpha, then you check tangent theta is negative or positive. If it is negative, then it will be minus the reference, uh, negative reference angle, or uh, if it is positive, it will be positive reference angle. Now, uh, this is the tangent inverse function, and we make the table of it. Uh, now, these values, minus 7 and 7, this is, or the other values, you can take 10 here, or the other, I mean, anything, like million, zillion, you can take more, but we can find them by using just a calculator, not, not ourselves. But here, so far, we learned tangent pi over 4, which is 45, it's 1, tangent 60 is uh, square root 3, and tangent minus pi over 4 is minus 1, so uh, we take the values here between minus pi over 2 and pi over 2. And then when you put it here, this, these are the x. Now the values are x and the angles are tangent inverse. So when you put them in the on the graph, you will see such a graph. So in this graph, I mean, y will be equal to y equal to pi over 2 is the horizontal asymptote and here y is equal to minus pi over 2 is a horizontal asymptote. Now, let's solve these uh, examples. A tangent, tangent, inverse of minus uh, 1,000. Now, um, let's, I mean, you can go back to uh, the properties and check uh, for any theta, the tangent, tangent, inverse. If this is the order, you can directly uh, delete them. So this, you can do it for any, any theta. So, or for any x. So, the answer will be directly minus 1,000. And when it comes to here, uh, we want to get an angle. Okay, so let's say let it be theta. Uh, and okay, theta will be from where? What's the range of it? It has to be between minus pi over 2 and pi over 2. So the question comes here. So this means tangent theta is equal to minus 1, and theta is between. Uh, 
minus pi over 2 and pi over 2. So what is this beta then? So uh, you can check here is, uh, I mean, which, okay, 1, uh, as you see, what makes 1? So we know tangent uh, pi over 4 is 1. And what makes minus 1? I mean, clearly tangent uh, minus pi over 4 will be minus 1. Because it's an odd function, you can take this minus out. And minus pi over 4 is in here. So it's minus pi over 4 is, you know, minus 45 is between minus 90 and uh, 90 degrees, right? So if you think this way, yeah, this minus pi over 4, pi over four is in, inside the interval. So this is the angle, uh, this is the only angle we can put here. So because in on this interval, the tangent function is 1 to 1. So pi over 4 will be the answer now. Now, when it comes to this question here, um, you can say, let this be theta, because tangent inverse will give you an angle. And the tangent theta is equal to square root 3. And we want theta between minus pi over 2 and pi over 2. And what makes this? So this is uh, theta is 60 degrees. So you have to remember this. So 60 means pi over 3. Well, this is minus 90 degrees and 90 degrees, you can say. And it's 60 is between them. So the answer will be pi over 3. Now, when it comes to, okay, uh, when it comes to tangent, uh, inverse of tangent uh, 7 pi over 6, uh, you can use the property, uh, okay, you can use the property uh, given in the previous page or previous slide, or you can try to do it this way, like tangent inverse tangent 7 pi over 6, uh, you can start, okay, if there's this minus here, so you can say this is just an angle you will find. So you can say that, I mean, tangent theta will be equal to, okay, when you put tangent both sides, like you can cancel tangent. So tangent theta will be equal to tangent 7 pi over 6. Um, uh, but, okay, before this one, I want to make this one clear. Um, now, uh, can we do this? No. Can we do this? No. Why not? Because uh, here, in order to do it, like you have to say this minus pi over 2 and pi over 2. Okay, it has to be uh, pi over 2 between pi over 2 and negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. Uh, if, if uh, okay, it's not inside minus pi over 2 and pi over 2. If it is, then you can do this. But, no, we cannot do it because it's not. So, uh, what will we do in this case? In this case, if the angle is not in the interval we want it, uh, you can start by saying this. Okay, let theta uh, be equal to the tangent inverse of tangent 7 pi over 6. Now, uh, tangent theta means here, when you take the tangent of both sides, you will get tangent is equal to 7 pi over 6. And uh, theta will be, theta will be in uh, pi minus pi over 2 and pi over 2. So you have to find an angle such that the tangent theta is equal to tangent 7 pi over 6. Now, you can use the reference angle of this. So here, uh, if theta is between uh, negative pi over 2 and pi over 2, it means if it were in the, okay, where is this? Pi over 2, and this when you go this way, it will be minus pi over 2. We can think this way, like if it is positive, it will be in the first quadrant. If it is negative, it will be in the fourth quadrant. 
uh, and here you have to look at the reference angle. What's the reference angle of theta? Okay, it will be 7 pi over 6 itself is in here, 7 pi over 6. Uh, it has to be a little more than that, so it has to be uh, 7 pi over 6 minus pi, which is pi over 6. So this has to be pi over 6. But uh, since it's tangent is what here? Tangent positive. So tangent positive here means uh, which angle should you choose theta? In negative part or in positive part? So you have to go positive part. So which angle will it be? It will be just pi over 6. Okay, this thinking, if you didn't understand, I strongly recommend you go back to uh, the slide before and the, the previous slide and check out this rule here. Uh, you know, there was a, this rule here, tangent inverse tangent theta rule. Uh, it's equal to plus alpha and minus alpha rule here. And you check tangent theta is negative, then you, it has to be negative alpha. It's plus. You say it's alpha. So here tangent is here. This is in the in the third quadrant. And so this will be positive. So if it is positive, you will find the reference angle. Sorry, you will find the reference angle. You will say it's equal to alpha. This is what exactly done here. Now we can say here this tangent, so it's positive. So this thing is positive. And its reference angle is what? Pi over 6. So according to the rule, if it is positive, it will be equal to plus pi over 6. So please check out the previous slide. Okay, the other thing here is, I mean, we have lots of rules here. Please do practice solve more questions. Okay, solve questions or solve exercises. Please solve exercises to, uh, you know, to memorize or to understand these. Otherwise, you know, uh, it's hard to memorize these, okay? I recommend you just do the practices and do the, you know, exercises, and then you can apply the rules. And each time when you apply the rules, each time you will get, uh, you will learn them and you will memorize them. It will help you to memorize. And uh, uh, that's it. Thanks for watching. And this is a little thick topic. Uh, and it's fully, uh, there are lots of details in it. Please do practice.